Hello, Algebra 2 students. You can't see me, but you will be able to in a minute. I can't figure out how to change the phone around um, in mid-video, but I wanted to show you what we we're doing today. I also wanted to show you um, my work setup here. Computer, I am holed up out here at the lake house. Um, hope that you guys are safe and enjoying family. A lot of you said that that was one of the good things that was going on in your life today, and I'm so pleased that you said that. Um, here we are. So I sent you notes on all of this. It's pretty lengthy, but it's very detailed, um, should have a lot of good instruction. And I sent you a little bit of an assignment to do. Have fun with it, make it nice colors, and uh, let's go. This is just going to be really quickly. Go through it. If you have questions, you can email. Um, I'll probably give you my phone number. You can text me too if you want, or we can Zoom conference. I'm not sure how that works, but we'll figure it out. So here we go. List of datas, list of data numbers. We can make this anything. Let's say number of ducks that passed by my house on any given day. I've already sorted it. It probably wouldn't have happened like this, um, but let's go with number of ducks. First of all, the frequency, a frequency table. You are simply listing the frequency of the occurrences of each number. So I'm going to say column one is the actual number. We have six, 10, 12, 19, 20, 21, and this is the frequency. Um, frequency two, three, one, two, one, one. Frequency table, awesome. We are done with that. This is a great way to organize your data if you have a lot of different numbers. As you will see in the notes, I give you a lot of different numbers. Um, great way to organize. Histogram. Um, histogram, we're going to have a nice title. Let's go ducks. <laughs> and then we are going to represent our data with, with rectangles and we're going to do it in ranges instead. I'm not going to have a rectangle for each, uh, each value. What I'm going to do is say my first rectangle is going to represent um, the occurrence of six to nine ducks. And then we're going to have 10 to 13. Let's go 14 to 17 and 18 to 21. Okay. So now for each range, I'm going to make a rectangle that will go up to the number of occurrences of the numbers in that range. So six to nine, I get to go up to two. I saw two ducks. Or I saw uh, two days where I saw six to nine ducks. Um, so this is number of days that this happened, and this is number of ducks. I could have a nice little fancy title with a picture. You'll see in one of the websites I sent you, um, data can be made really beautiful, and it also can be misleading. So go ahead and look at some of those um, examples I sent you, and if you have time, click on some of the links. Uh, this is fascinating information out there. So 10 to 13 I have, I get to go up to four. Here we go, four. Uh, 14 to 17, I have zero, so I'm just going to highlight zero just to uh, let you know that I didn't forget about this. It's just it didn't occur during. And then uh, I have four. Nice. I have four here. Nice histogram representing um, how many ducks I saw while I was staying out here quarantined. I'm actually not quarantined. I'm, what is it? So I'm social distancing. There you go. So there's a histogram. Here you go. <clears throat> stem and leaf. Another great way to represent data. So here's my stem and here's my leaf. A great organizational tool. And stem and leaf will actually um, sometimes look like a histogram sideways. Although it will keep the integrity of the data, you'll still have the actual numbers there for you. With the histogram, we kind of mixed it up. But when I had six to nine, I didn't know if it was six, seven, eight, or nine. I just knew it; uh, those numbers fell in the six to nine range. So here, the stem of your stem and leaf is going to be the tens digit of your number, and the leaf is going to be the ones digit. The leaf is always the ones digit, um, unless you don't have a ones and you stop at ten. If you have a three-digit number, your stem is going to be 
um, perhaps two digits of hundreds and tens. So here we go, we have zero for tens place, one for tens place, and two, and our leaves are gonna be the digits in the ones place. So I have six, six, I have zero, 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 two, nine, nine, and I have zero, one. Your book puts commas between the digits or the ones digits. Um, there are other people that believe that you should not have commas. It should be all tightly put together so that it will really represent how many. You can clearly see how many in each category. So stem and leaf, there you go. And I get to erase that one. Last is box and whiskers. And to do a box and whiskers, you have to, we have to review a little bit on median of a set, data set. So I think if I say median, you can probably tell me it's the middle number. Remember that your data has to be in order from least to greatest. So the median, median of this set is the middle number. Oops, I have two middle numbers. So check this out my median is going to be the average of those. So my median for this is 11. If I have two as the middle, middle numbers, I don't have a single middle number, I have two, my median is going to be the average. For, um, for a box and whisker, we also need the first and the third quartile. So first quartile and third. That's an L. Quartile. <clears throat> so for the first quartile, really not so bad. All I do, I'm not going to use that color. I take the first half of the data set and I find its median. So the first quartile is really the median of the first half of your data set. First quartile here is going to be, ah, 10. Guess what? Third quartile is going to be the median of the second half of the data set. And third, uh, third quartile here is going to be 19. As you can probably guess, um, the median is also known as the second quartile. There you go. So here are all my quartiles. I also need the minimum value, six is the minimum, and the maximum, 21. All right, box and whisker court, uh, plot, here we come. For my box and whisker, I'm going to have a number line down here. My data starts at six, so I don't necessarily want to start at zero and say one, two, three, four, five, six. I could, don't have to. My data starts at six, so I'm gonna have dot, 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 if this is zero, dot, 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 and then this first value is gonna be six. Um, honestly, I think I'm gonna go by, I think I'm gonna go by fives here. No, I don't wanna do fives. I think I might go by fives. Let's go with a five here, and 10, and 15, and 20, and 25. There we go. Nice and even. You'll see in the notes um, that my data set started, I think, with a 53. And so I put a zero here and dot, 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 and I started, I think, with 50. So there you go. Here are my, this is my number line to represent uh, these values or so to help me represent these values and the space they take up. I'm going to plot each of these. The first quartile is at 10, and I'm gonna make a line here, but I'm also going to write the actual value. Um, second quartile is 11. Wow, so close. Second quartile is 11, so I'm gonna put it right next, and I'm gonna go 11 there. Third quartile is 19, look at this. So you can see that my data is, is really kind of pushed low. Um, oops. So here is my box. I'm going to draw my box here. This is my box. Um, whoops, sorry. This is 19. Here's my box. My whiskers are going to be my maxes and min. So I have a whisker down here at six. Uh, put a little dot here and I'll put the number six up there. 
And then I have a whisker at 21 and 21. There you go. This is a box and whisker plot and it shows that the middle portion of your data, it shows that the, uh, the grouping of the middle portion of your data. So that's it. Lovely box and whisker. Like I said, use lots of good colors if you want to. If you want to do research and figure out how to do all of these plots, either on your calculator um, or on an Excel spreadsheet, I'm not sure you can do this one on Excel, but some of the others you can, um, go for it. Remember that you need to turn in a document on Google Classroom. So you'll either have to copy paste or you'll have to paste it together and scan it or take pictures, but somehow you're gonna to need to turn in one single document. I hope you all are well. I hope that this helps you pass the day if you are interested in something to pass the day. And uh, good luck. Contact me if you have questions. All right, bye.